this video is part of a series. We're going over just the basics of working with Android images. It's, it's boot loader, it's uh, boot images and recovery images. Uh, last time we looked at taking uh, the Twerp the team, team Win recovery project and extracting that image, that recovery image, and making some modifications. Uh, right now my phone is at the bootloader screen that has been unlocked, which we went over in the first tutorial. Be sure to check out the annotation on the screen or the link in the description for the full playlist. And um, the way I got to the bootloader was running this command, sudo adb reboot bootloader. Uh, and uh, as I've mentioned in previous tutorials, tools that we're gonna be using is the fast boot, adb, and boot uh, aboot img, which if you're on a Debian based system, you can whoops run this command. Otherwise, check whatever package manager in your repositories for those programs. Um, and let's go ahead and boot into a recovery image. So I'll just I'll boot into if you watched the previous video, the custom recovery I made with the Punisher theme. It's just the same uh, twerp recovery, but with a different theme, and I changed some of the wording on the screen. So we're going to say sudo fast boot uh, Punisher whatever image you're booting. And this is not making any modifications on the phone. This is just loading the image to RAM and booting it. Uh, and once it's loaded up, I can then run sudo adb shell. And that brings me to the shell on the phone. In the recovery, by default, you have a root shell. So I'm root on this phone right now in the recovery. Now, on the screen right now on the phone, there's buttons for doing backups and recoveries and other modifications to the phone. I do recommend using that to make a backup, but you can also manually backup partitions. But first, let's look at all the partitions. If we do mount, you can see there's a bunch of stuff already mounted. You can see by default um, the uh, recovery mounted some partitions, which you can modify that. It should all be in this file if we list out. Um, our files here, you can see there's knit RC, and we're not gonna get into that too much on this. Oh. If I go into it with a text editor, you can see uh, that there's going to be, it's creating some directories and it's going to mount some directories. So this is where you can modify what partitions get mounted and where. Uh, let's go ahead and just exit out of that. We're not gonna get into that in this tutorial, but I just wanted to show you that. But how do you know what partitions are what? Well, there's a few different ways of doing that. If we CD into device, now if you're used to Linux systems, you can usually hit list in here, and there's usually going to be a, a SD something or an HD something. You won't see that on an Android device. Uh, what we want to go into is block device. So we're in a folder called dev for devices forward slash block. If we list out here, you can see a bunch of block devices. And really, there's two that we're worried about these. MMCBLK, so the MMC block devices. Uh, you got block device one and block device zero. Block device zero should be your internal hard drive on your phone, and the block one device should would be an SD card if you have one in the phone, which I do. And of course, just like looking at SDA one, SDA two, this is the first device we have P1, which is partition. My SD card only has one partition, and that's SD card one as far as Android's concerned. SD card zero on this device is my internal memory, uh, which is also block device one, and you can see there are a lot of partitions, <laughs> uh, like 30 some partitions, skipping a few numbers, so 20 to 30 partitions here. How do you know which device is which? Well, there's two ways of doing this. Uh, we can run the parted command, which is my preferred way of doing this. It's just how I do it. We can do parted and the name of the block device. So uh, MMC BLK zero, because I want my internal and I'll hit enter. So now we're running the parted command on that device. And if we type in print, it will print all the partitions and their labels. So as we can see, uh, user data is here, your system, which is your main operating system, which you can modify, but you want to be careful doing, and we'll talk about that in future tutorials. We have a recovery and a boot. Uh, you also notice that you have a boot backup, and you have a lot of, a lot of partitions on here, uh, and some of them are 
basic formats, uh, X, uh, EXT4 or EXT2, um, ones that are not, uh, such as our recovery, is going to be a package uh, like the image that we had before that, um, that we extracted that had a, a kernel in it and, a, and an operating system uh, initial RAM disk and a boot config file. So you have a boot and recovery, both about the same size in this case, tells you where it starts and how big it is. Uh, so you got the start, end, and size of that partition. So on the actual hard drive, it's starting at the 107th megabyte and it's going to the 117th megabyte and it's about 10 megabytes in size. Recovery is the default recovery because we haven't flashed anything over. If you flashed a custom recovery, that's where it will be. Let's go ahead and pull our boot image. Um, so I'm going to type in exit or quit. Let's try quit. There we go, quit to get out of that. Control L to clear, clear the screen. Now, if you used the screen of your phone while in recovery mode, you could have backed up, you would have backed up the recovery and the, probably the boot image as well. Uh, but you can manually do that. If you're familiar with Linux, you can use the DD command, which is uh, pretty much on every Linux system, even routers and phones like this. So again, let's check out mount and we can see the SD card one is mounted. That's gonna be my SD card. I'm going to uh, CD to that, so change directory to that. You can list out, you can see I have a few things listed out here. And um, I've actually already done this, but I'll quickly do, it's not very big. I'll run the DD command. So DD and then IF for input file. And I'm gonna say, well, I need to remember what number the partition was and I forgot. So I'll say parted device block M or block device zero. And I'll say print again. And you can see right here, I want to grab the boot, which is partition 31. 31, okay. So again, we'll type in quit, clear the screen, and I'll say dd in file equals device, block device. Oh, you can't autocomplete on this. So uh, let's go ahead and make sure we type everything right. I'm gonna say list device, block device, um, uh, zero P <laughs> what did I say <laughs> I said it was um, scrolling up here 31 31 remember that you got to remember that number 31 so now I can I don't need to even run that command but I'll clear that out now I'll say DD in file IF equals and we'll say that device and I'll say out file equals and I'll say uh, I'll just call it boot.img. Just make sure you're not overwriting a file that already exists, uh, that you've already backed up. I'll hit enter. Didn't take very long. It's only 10 megabytes. There's no output if you're copying a bigger, uh, like your system. It might take a little while and it's not going to give you any progress bar. Just let it go. Okay, so I've pulled that partition, put it into an image on my SD card. Let me exit out. So now I'm back at the prompt for my computer here. As you can see, I have the images I've created. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do sudo adb pull and from SD card one, my boot, oops, boot.img. Okay, and if I list this out, you can see that I have pulled the boot.img file. And if I list it out, you can see how big it is and it should be about 10 megabytes, which it is. And if I run file, on the name, it tells me that it is the Android boot IMG as a kernel RAM disk. Very, very similar to our recovery image, but this is our boot image. This is the partition that every time we start our phone is the image that runs. It puts the initial RAM disk and kernel into RAM, and then it mounts the other system directory, system partitions, and runs off that. So we can make modifications to that, flash it back to the phone, or we can make modifications to that and boot it like a live CD as we did with the recovery um, without actually making changes to the partition on the phone. Okay, so let me go ahead and real quick here, I can remove the boot folder that we created in a previous tutorial. 
And just like the previous tutorial, what I can do here is I can, let's remake the boot folder. I just want to clear it out. I'll move into it. And again, I'll use the aboot IMG program to extract the boot IMG. And you can see that it created three files and we're going to want to extract the um, init rd IMG. So we will say uh, g unzip dash c the file. Oh, you know what? Before that, let's make a directory to extract all this too. Otherwise, it'll extract it here and things will get messy. We'll extract, we'll make a directory called ram disk. And we'll move into that directory. And then we will use gunzip dash c the init ram disk image. We'll pipe that into cpio i. And as you can see, we've extracted. You can see that the actual boot partition has a um, lot more startup files. It has all these different files that start up things by uh, the zygote is the actual Android interface, uh, radios, your touch screen, USB drivers, that's all that sort of stuff. And you can create your own custom image and add it in here, which we're going to do in a future tutorial, probably the next tutorial I think I have it planned for. Um, and it RC is basically where all the other stuff loads. If we were to move into that, uh, you can see it imports other uh, boot scripts. And I do want to point out that these are not shell scripts, even though some of the commands look the same. But you can call shell scripts from here. And there are a list of commands that you can do, like making directory mount and changing the owner, um, writing to stuff, writing to files, writing strings to files. Uh, and we will get into that a little bit more, again, in a future tutorial. Don't want to go over too much in one video. Exit out of that. So we've extracted it. We could make changes, modify it, and then boot it. Again, I don't want to get too much into that in this tutorial because we're going to start doing a lot of stuff with this image. But now you have the actual original boot image, the boot partition from your phone. Back this up, back up all the partitions, uh, whether you're using the recovery image on the phone, uh, you know, the twerp, or if you DD each one. I actually did both to have double backups in case I screw anything up. As long as I don't screw up the... Um, the bootloader portion of it, I can always go to the bootloader and flash or boot whatever images I have backed up. So once you have everything backed up, you should be good to go. Um, very hard to mess things up that you can't recover from, again, besides the actual bootloader uh, on the phone. You screw that up, uh, good luck with that. Um, so yeah, we're going to modify this image to make changes to how the phone boots. And I've done this in the past with previous versions of Android, and it's very easy to change permissions on your shell to give you root access. On newer versions of Android, they have disabled it so that you can't use what's called set UID on files. So before you used to be able to take your shell, your sh file from your phone from the system partition, make a copy of that, and then change its permission to say, anytime this program is run by any user, run as root. Obviously, that's a bad idea. That's how Android devices used to be. Newer Android devices do not let that happen. You can change it, and it will just run as whatever user runs it as, which is your regular shell user. We need to figure out a way to root the device that allows you well, to have root uh, and also I think is a bit more secure because before, if you did that, if you created that SU file, a lot of phones have that. If you got malicious pieces of software on your phone, it could check for that SU file and run it. What I want to do is I want to create something that I can, uh, like a root, um, uh, what's the word I'm looking for, a root program, a root service that I can turn on and off and have that be password protected and maybe even a password and key protected so I can have two steps and I can turn it on and I'm I also the way I have my phone set up is I don't have root installed to the phone although I could do that what I do do is I do do is I can boot a boot image anytime I want then I can go type in a username and password 
maybe set a key, get my root shell, which is a little bit different than, than just SU. And at any point, if I reboot my phone, it disables it again. And to get that root access again, I'll need to boot from my computer again. Uh, and I, that's just like little steps of security. Although you can set it up so that you flash the image and it boots with the root access every time, still being password protected. Um, so a lot of things to think there. I think that this is a more complex way of doing it, but a better way of doing it. Definitely a good thing that Android has disabled that set UID on those files that obviously was a security issue. Um, but yeah, we got a new way of doing things. And so I showed you today just how to look at what partitions are on your Android device and how to pull them off using DD and how to extract it, which I went over in a previous tutorial. I also went over in the previous tutorial how to recompact that, which we'll be doing more of once we look at how we modify stuff. So that's it for this tutorial. If you're enjoying these, they're a little more advanced, but I hope you're enjoying them. Be sure to check out uh, my website, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with a K. There should be a link in the description. Uh, be sure to like, share, and subscribe. Uh, and as always, I hope that you have a great day. I hope, again, I hope you're enjoying these tutorials. I know they're a little more advanced, but there's not too many tutorials out there on this sort of stuff. It took me a lot of digging around and poking around for days, just messing with my system to figure all this out. So I'm hoping this helps you learn and you don't have to do as much poking around as I did. Have a great day. Okay, this is an introduction to filmsbychris.com. I'm Chris, that's Chris the K. That's me right there. My daughter Ember, and my wife Jennifer. We pretty much live in the swamps of Florida. I'm a firefighter by day, as well as by night. We work long hours. But that's not why you're here. You're here about the videos I put up on YouTube. These videos are mainly about computers and programming, which means most of my videos look something like this. And if that's what you're interested in, great. If not, that's alright. I do videos on other topics too, such as video editing, special effects, photo editing, 3D design, and music creation. If you are one of my viewers and you enjoy my videos, my Patreon page is a place where you can go to help support my videos. So I ask that you take the time to go to my Patreon page and look at the different levels of rewards you can receive for different levels of backing. There should be a link in the description of this video if you are watching it on YouTube. Otherwise, you can visit patreon.com forward slash metalx1000. And I thank you for your time and your support. Have a great day.